as ministers in the temple of justice. For anyone on the bench of the Nigerian judiciary, this chamber is the ultimate. Let us all strive to maintain the independence of the judiciary so as to ensure the rule of law. And the fact that the ministry is responsible for prosecution of cases makes the ministry very visible naturally. If it is to buy time, you know who is buying time. Becoming the first woman in the country to discharge the function. To me, I love we see that. Welcome to the program, The Scale of Justice. Tune in every Monday at 2.05 p.m. And the repeat broadcast comes up every Wednesday at 6.30 a.m. on the network service of the NTA. Keep the date with us. We all have our heads buried in the fight against this strange disease called coronavirus, and understandably so. But is this not really the time that we all should lift our heads up and look around us for the lessons we can learn from the circumstance we find ourselves in this battle? Lessons for our various national institutions, our limitations, and organizational capabilities. The justice sector in Nigeria, like the economy and socio-cultural arms, have been victims of this lockdown that has accompanied the pandemic. But forced holidays have not been completely strange to our court system. Have you heard of the term vacation judges before? So, as we speak, in this lockdown, courts must still operate even if skeletally. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, in announcing the lockdown of courts, also said that time-bound cases must still continue to be determined. On the scale today, we bring you reactions of some key personalities in Nigeria's justice system on the effects of the pandemic lockdown on Nigeria's judiciary and what role the law plays in all this. Welcome to the program. I am Femi Okewo. Our first personality is the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Are there are notes that you are taking that affects the law. What is the role of the law in all the situations that we have found ourselves? Well, um, I think two things are apparent arising from the affliction of COVID-19 uh, that has uh, been rated as uh, being pandemic within the international context of things with particular reference to governance and indeed the justice sector. The two afferent things, for example, are the fact that um, our limitations, our inadequacies as a government, as a structure, has indeed been exposed. And indeed, the need for paradigm shift in the governance architecture had indeed manifested and with um, a serious call for, a clarion call for consideration. 
Now, limiting the scope of my assessment to justice sector, for example, the fact is clear and apparent that uh, indeed a situation that calls for abrupt and complete closure of the justice sector system to a larger extent and degree had indeed exposed the need for us now to do, I mean, to bring about aggressive solution. As it is now, the courts are not sitting. Uh, correctional service centers are not admitting. Challenges related to crimes are equally there in the system and needs to be addressed. Challenges relating to cases that are time bound within the context of judicial administration are there. And then we have a kind of wholehearted effect on the system that is rendered helpless. Fundamentally, because of the fact that we have limitations relating to infrastructure, limitations relating to deployment of technology, challenges relating to the facilities within the justice sector. So if anything, the justice sector indeed is badly affected, and then the call for immediate aggressive action for the purpose of containing the future as it relates to service delivery within the context of the justice sector had indeed manifested. How do you think the courts, for instance, can recover lost grounds when all this is over? Well, the lost grounds are multiple and multifaceted. If you are talking perhaps of the need for the court system to be working during the system of complete uh, closure of the system arising from afflictions of this nature. There is need now to give a greater emphasis and consideration to IT, information technology, system deployment of technology, and indeed a special consideration to speed in terms of administration of justice. For you now to deploy the IT within the context of the justice sector in terms of um, covering the lost grounds. It is indeed a function of legislation where none exists. And it is indeed a function of aggressive implementation of those legislations that have the potency of bringing about speedy determination of justice. For example, we have in place Administration of Criminal Justice Act and the major innovations associated with the Administration of Criminal Justice Act is the fact that it imbibed the need for speed in the determination of justice. Speed in terms of automation. Speeds in terms of aggressive hearing of cases day in, day out. But then the question is, what do we need to do in the circumstances that we find ourselves for the purpose of bringing about and turning things around for the purpose of bringing about into the justice administration the desired speed? Within the context of administration of Criminal Justice Act, you have administration of Criminal Justice Committee. And I think the relevance of that committee for the purpose of bringing about the desired speed in the administration of justice has manifested now much more than any other time before. So it is indeed a function of bringing about the relevant committees that are in place, ensuring at the end of the day relevant policies that brings about the speed in the administration of justice are deployed. As you might be aware, in 2012, there is a um, uh, technology deployment process within the context of the judicial administration that was brought in as a policy. Even though the policy document has been developed, and to a larger, to some degree, we have commenced the process of deployment of technology in the administration of justice. But along the line, I think we have, to a certain degree, relaxed in terms of deployment of technology 
well, as far as the conduct of proceedings are concerned. So I think um, the COVID-19 pandemic that has set in has indeed brought about the need for the revival, for the aggressive pursuit, revival of those committees and ensuring aggressive pursuit of the policies, action plans associated with administration of justice committee, action plan associated with deployment of technology, action plans as well relating to practice directions that will bring about the need for deployment of technology. Time is ripe already that we should be seen to have fast the stage of manual filings of court proceedings. Time has passed that we should be seen, uh, we, uh, we should allow ourselves to be conducting physical trials in, even in respect of simple matters like hearing of applications. Mm. Time has passed that we should be, uh, we should forget about scheduling of cases manual scheduling of cases. So this, there are a lot of things that we can bring about within the context of justice administration. There are environments and climates now as it is, notwithstanding the ravage associated with COVID-19 where courts are sitting. So we need to take advantage of the technology, bring about online proceedings, bring about online fi court filings, bring about hearing of cases through online technological processes as against a physical presence and manual operations of administration of justice processes. I think um, what we have witnessed arising from the lockdown associated with COVID-19 is aggressive need for deployment of technology aggressive need for activation of the, the relevant committees to ensure at the end of the day relevant associated action plans that now to a larger degree reduced the need for manual uh, administrative processes relating to justice sector are brought to bear so as to allow the system to operate and continue in operation in the conduct of cases, conduct of court proceedings, filing of the court processes and associated things within the context of administration of justice. The law already has provided for this window. Um, it, money has always been a problem. But in the light of the current situation, we're going to have less money again because of the effect on the economy. What assurance do we have that after this has gone, something revolutionary would be done in, in this area. I think um, the government under the leadership of President Muhammadu Buhari is alive to its responsibilities within the context of financial provision in the system. I think one major and critical step that has been taken by the government mm -hmm. is a clear and complete abolition of a uh, so uh, a petroleum subsidy. So if you now factor the savings arriving from the subsidy, I think the desired support to our economy could definitely set in in terms of provisions relating to infrastructure, uh, uh, infrastructural demands associated with deployment of technology in the key sector of our governance. Key sectors relating to financial institutions, sectors relating to justice sector institutions, among others. So uh, what I'm trying to say is the fact that the government is alive to its responsibilities in terms of making provisions for savings through policy deployment, through deployment of policies that will create additional source of funding for the government and savings for the government is indeed a step in the right direction. You can as well remember very well when this government came, came in place, realizing the, the uh, volume of money being expended in the import of rice and associated agricultural product, for example, the government had taken a decision to now, uh, to now revive agriculture, and I'm happy that it has been accommodated by people substantially. So imagine if those policies relating to self-sufficiency in food have not been employed today. What could have been the fate of Nigeria taking into consideration the impossibility of import 
of um, agricultural products inclusive of rice from Thailand, India, among others. So I think um, the government is uh, indeed working in the right direction in providing the, de providing the desired savings for the system. And that is why, as it is today, we are making progress economically, notwithstanding the international economic downturn that we are witnessing all over and universally for that matter. So I think uh, the, our challenges relating to funding and resources are being addressed within the context of the policies employed by the government to ensure we have sufficient savings to the extent that those things that are not necessary for importation are being produced locally for local consumption and to the extent that perhaps maybe those financial responsibilities that are not critical to the government who is part, are making a particular reference to the subsidy elimination for that matter are all ways and manner through which the government will at the end of the day uh, have some resources to deploy for the purpose of enhancing the efficiency of the system notwithstanding the prevailing economic downturn that has set into the universal financial uh, market. The FCT judiciary was one of the first to react to the pandemic. Its chief judge, Justice Ishak Bello, is also part of the federal government's decongestion program of the correctional centers in the country. I was constantly in a state of worry because the intention behind setting up a vacation job is to ensure that all shops are not closed so that time-bound cases, issues of fundamental rights such as bail applications and what have you could be attended to during the period of so it is, it, the closure is not absolute. We have a vacation judge on ground, a seizure, to attend to such matters. But even as I directed such appointment, I was in a state of worry. Uh, psychologically, I was feeling disturbed because even an application for bail could attract large crowd, it depending, depending on the individual involved as the defendant. So it's not... Uh, a walkover thing, that judge could be ex exposed to this deadly virus. Constantly, his thoughts come into my mind. What is likely to happen to him in the circumstance? But then, I somehow give myself consolation. Uh, we have citizens at the war front, quote on court right now, in the best interest of the, of the nation. Therefore, someone has to be here to attend to those cases. But yeah. then, uh, uh, um, as I said, it's not an absolute closure. Uh, we, are, we are even going beyond that. I'm thinking of introducing the online conferencing, uh, which will perhaps reduce the incidences of any exposure or vulnerability. Yes, that's, but, that's the area I want to go yes. into now. Um, somebody has said that the incidence of this uh, pandemic uh, has uh, given like a rude awakening to the Nigerian society or the world generally, but the Nigerian society in areas where we were weak before, how we can strengthen. I know that your court had always uh, pushed for the e-filing and uh, uh, adjudication through uh, online processes. How would you be able to utilize that to recover lost grounds? Yeah, definitely, as I said, uh, something is already in the offing. Uh, I have sent messages across through WhatsApp to some of the senior judges indicating my desire to have introduced in this court a conferencing approach through Zoom uh, so that uh, Cases like applications, uh, 
originating summons where you don't need to have witnesses leading evidence to see as a trial, to see how it can fare. But uh, you see, all the innovations that we have brought here, I made sure that I primarily discussed first and foremost with the judges and of course even the magistracy. So that by the time we discussed, and I'm able to understand the psychic and perspective and contributions when I come down with practice direction, meaning that it's a practice direction not only made uh, singularly by the chief judge, but by the contributions of the judges and the magistracy and other stakeholders. So it becomes owned up by everybody. I told them that uh, when we once we resume, I'm going to summon that meeting. And in order to attain the social distancing, we're not, we're not even going to hold this meeting at the judges conference hall because of the uh, conjecture there, uh, congestion, likely congestion. So we're going to hold it at the ceremonial court where we'll have a lot of space in there. And uh, the reaction I got from some of them that I have sent this one is quite encouraging. Uh, and and uh, I didn't restrict it to the judges here. I also threw this to the chief judges platform where we communicate things. And I think deliberately I made that so that I encourage my fellow heads of court to also buy into it. And our reaction will not be complete without a focus of, on the key personalities that patronize the court, that is, the legal practitioners. We have Ahmed Raji, a senior advocate of Nigeria. How will this lockdown affect the calendar of legal practitioners? Uh, it is it's going to affect it in a very substantial way, especially the litigants. Because this is a situation which was never contemplated by the rules of the court. I think there is a need for us to embrace technology in the sense that um, Right now in America, the Supreme Court is going to sit on a matter despite the uh, debilitating effect of this uh, uh, virus on them. But how are they going to do it Til through teleconferencing? But you cannot have a teleconferencing in a low-tech environment. Your technology must be there. The power must be there. Do we have it here? These are the issues. I think now the question of power, the government and the people must have to do something about it so that we have a high technology base, then we can now take advantage of technology to be able to dispense justice. Because the whole idea of technology is to limit human transaction physical in, in a very great way. Like uh, e-filing. We don't need to go there to go and file. But for you to do e-filing, both the user and the recipient must key into a system. Where is the system here? Where is it? And then you have to retrain our key personnel. This is just our first part of our series on the reactions of these personalities to the COVID-19 incidents in Nigeria and how the law can influence positively the happenings around us. We shall be focusing more on their comments in the weeks to come. We'll see you again.